engine and gearbox and axle as, as the main body structure of a tractor. So he couldn't call his company Ford because there was already a small company in America, named Ford, uh, building some pretty, pretty rubbish tractors to be fair. Um, and so he called his company Ford Sun. Morning, it's another Monday. Um, it's now Monday afternoon. I've spent the morning a bit on the Defender. I've put the Anderson connectors in front and rear. Um, the rear one is for the winch on the trailer and goes straight to the secondary battery. And that'll be the main one that I use for jumping, like jump starting other vehicles, etc. Because it's on that main battery and the power cable short. Uh, I've got one on the front now, which is directly connected to the battery in the truck. So in the event that this is a bit low, I can always connect onto here, or it's gonna be the position where I put the trickle charger um, when I get one at home in the garage. Um, but I'm not gonna jump anything heavy off that because it's not as thick a wire. So um, also we have put the conduit on the cables for the air compressors, they're done. Um, and what else have I done? Oh, I've mounted the fuel cutoff switch because that was just rattling around. And obviously if that goes upside down, then it'll cut the fuel. So I've now mounted that. Um, but I've just had a call to say that, that my landlord's Freelander is making a horrendous noise and can I have a look? So I'll insert the video. It looks like one of the prop donuts has gone. So I'm just gonna whip the prop off just so he can still use it for now. And then chances are he probably won't put it back on, but you know, it's, if he wants to fix it, he can. So let's get this prop off. And I think I've shown you these before, but it's just four bolts there. You've got your prop donut here. This is the one that's gone, as you can hear. Uh, your prop donut here, and then six bolts on the front diff. These run absolutely fine in front wheel drive, no problem at all. So let's quickly whip that off. Right, well, I've knocked up the uh, bit in metal from your vent. Obviously it needs to be welded up and just finished off. Um, the pipes arrived. So that needs to be drilled and welded on there and there. I've not put a flange on the bottom because I thought when it's on the bulkhead, that can blow hot air down to the footwell. So I'm gonna, once it's all welded up and once it's all welded up and straight, I'll just trim a little envelope out of there, a little, little window, um, just so there's some airflow going down into the footwell. So it's another little bit ticked off, well, until it's welded anyway. Oh, we've got a little gift from YouTube through the post. No, it's not 100,000 subscribers, because I've only got four, but I've got this little thing. It's a neon light. So now I've got to strategically place this in all the videos so it can be spotted. So let's get it plugged in and I'll show you. And there it is. I don't know how well it comes out on camera, um, but it's quite bright and you can adjust the brightness up and down. There you go. Um, and I've got to tag them in YouTube High Five. So yeah, so we'll have to uh, find somewhere for that to go, probably on the new wall. I'm sure we can put a little shelf up and put that on. So yeah, thanks YouTube. On to the next thing. Well, I can't do a great deal more. I'm now running it up just to let it get to temperature. Make sure nothing's leaking out of it. I've checked all the brakes, sorry, all the lights. Everything works. I've just got to check that it drives and stops, which I can't do until a steering wheel turns up. But I thought if I got it run up to temperature and make sure it sort of sits there all right, there's no reason why it can't go for an MOT, is there? Nervous, very nervous. Well, it was running for 40 minutes and no issues to speak of. Um, the only thing I did find is when I tried to put the suspension up, the front near side corner wouldn't go up. Um, it's loosened the dashboard and it started moving. So one of the pipes was slightly kinked. So I've just re-rooted uh, re them. So they're not um, such a sharp turn. I might have to redo all that to be fair 
because now there's a lot more behind the dash. It is getting a little bit tight behind there, so I might have to take the panels off and do them again. But at the minute, it works, so we'll leave it for the time being. Um, we have got what looks like a fresh puddle under there. Not the, not the one at the back, but this one. So I need to check what that is. Um, and the temp gauge was a little bit erratic. I think where I've taken it apart, I might have damaged something. So I've got another set of clocks out to try. Um, and that worked. So we might have to just rejig another set of clocks, even though it, the mileage is out. We'll have to deal with that. Or we take out the, uh, I don't know if you can take out the actual dial and swap it over, but I'll have a look in a minute. Right, let's see what this little patch is. Right, well, um, I had to put another set of clocks in. The heat, the temperature and the revs stopped working. So annoying. So I put another, clock, another set of clocks in and the mileage was flashing because it wasn't the right clocks. It didn't match the BCU. Um, but I just realized my snap on machine can calibrate the two. So it's now reading the BCU mileage, which is the original mileage of the engine. So that's handy to know for the future. So yes, so they're now working, hopefully. It's hard to tell with the temperature, obviously, because it's just sitting here idly. It's not moving about, but um, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, I've got, when the when you plug the snap-on machine, it does give you cooling temperature, etc. through that. So I'll be able to keep an eye on it tomorrow, probably. Anyway, that's that technically done for now. Um, the air line that was crimped I've done, I think I showed you, put the spare wheel back on. I've still got to take that earth lead off. I must do that tomorrow. Um, but pretty much everything is there and ready to go for an MOT. I just hope the steering wheel boss turns up this afternoon properly. Uh, sorry, turns up and it is the right one. And then we'll have a steering wheel. And then tomorrow we might even be able to take it outside. Right, well, the steering wheel's on. Um, we had to buy some spacers. Now I bought one big spacer and that didn't work because of the orientation. So I had to buy three smaller ones and just rotate them all the tight but bit and bolt them on. And we've now got a good gap without a problem. It doesn't encroach in seating space. Now you might notice something. It's turned round. We've been on our first test drive. Just up the private lane and back. The air suspension is so comfy. No, no harsh ride, it's just wafting along. It's awesome. Um, I'm getting lots of boosty, um, dumpy noises out of the air filter because the intake is right behind the bulkhead at the minute. It's not connected to the snorkel. I need to get a bit of pipe between there. Um, we're boosting between 15 and 20 PSI on overboost and then it drops back down a bit. Um, we did have one problem. I got onto the track and heard a knocking noise, quickly stopped. I hadn't tightened the wheel nuts up. So we tightened them up and then went up the track. Um, yeah, <laughs> to say I'm excited is a bit of an understatement. Right, there's only one thing then, isn't it? I'm gonna quickly bleed the brakes again because they feel a little bit soft. So now it's had a bit of a move, move around. I'll quickly bleed them up. And now I think I need to book an MOT. Right, it was advised on the MOT of the Z3, which I've now got on the lift. Don't know if I've shown it already. Um, that the front brake lines were flaking or covered in stuff. So it was just the outer coating. They're actually completely solid. So I've just rubbed them down a bit, covered them in black paint. Um, and they're absolutely fine. There's no corrosion on them at all. So they're good to go again. Oh, and the, the brakes do need a good clean up. Obviously it's been sat for a long time, so it needs a good good drive out and clean them up as well before uh, someone notices them and says something. Right, a couple more jobs done. Uh, the Malenko slide locks. I have repositioned those because obviously where the tub and the doors and everything have been off, they weren't aligned. Um, now these bits aren't supposed to be able to come off because um, the screws are up behind here to move it. I needed to move it up slightly. Um, it doesn't, it tells you that once they're on, they're on, but they're not. I won't tell you how, just in case. I don't think it makes any difference because it's only to stop it sliding back, but a couple of bits of welding wire done the job. Um, so right, so they're on both sides. Um, I don't think there's much else 
to do before MOT. It is booked for MOT. So, uh, yeah. Today's Wednesday. It's booked in Friday morning. So, hmm. I'll come back to you in the morning. I've got a little job to do tomorrow, Thursday. Right, Thursday morning. Got the Land Rover on the lift. Um, as I say, it's going for MOT tomorrow. So, I'm just going to go around and do a quick nut and bolt check. Um, also, this will help me not realise the height of the suspension. So, I can now measure with it a full droop on the shocks as to where it is. I don't want to obviously pump up the pressure and go and pump it up further than you know the suspension allows it to. Because obviously if you go if you put too much pressure in and it can't raise it's going to be constantly at the end of the shocks and also it's going to be really bumpy. So uh, that's the other thing. And we're still looking for our leak. Now it's been on here for about five minutes and as you can see it's dripping coolant. It's coming out of that little hole on the bell housing. Now obviously the gearbox doesn't have water in. Um, so my thought is it's dripping in the top, going around the clutch and coming out the bottom. So we need to have a look from the top and see if we can see what that is. Joy. I think I found the cause. This pipe here that goes off to the matrix was wet. The hose clip that was on it was tight as it would go, but you could still move it. So there was a gap there. So I think it was hitting there running down the back there, around the bell housing or even through it and out the bottom. Um, now, I'm not even sure if this pipe's any good to be fair, because I've done this one up tight and it's still, I don't know. I wonder whether the pipe's not round. But we've tightened that one up, we'll see what happens. At least we know if, in case we need to change that metal pipe there. Um, yeah. Right, I will run it and see what happens. Right, well, it's been there 10 minutes now and there's no water on the floor. So I'm guessing it was that pipe and we have resolved it. Thank God for that. Um, I've also been mucking about with pressures and heights. Um, and to get it pretty much halfway between its travel, I need 60 PSI in the front bags and 50 PSI in the rear. Obviously with me, a great fatty sat in the, uh, in the front, I might need to just alter out a little bit. Um, but yeah. That's about right. So that puts us halfway between our travel. So we can go up um, another 10 centimetres and go down 10 centimetres. We've got about 20 centimetres of travel. Um, so what's that? Over six inches. So probably eight, seven or eight inches of travel. So, so there, that's that remedied. Right, so next job, we're gonna hook this up to a trailer, make sure all the electrics work and see how it sits with a loaded trailer on it. I'm not going to drive anywhere, just going to use it in the yard just to have a look. Right, so it's time to bring the other Defender in. So using this as a towing vehicle just to move it around. The front is still at 60 psi, the rear is now at 80 with that on it. Um, so it's something we'll have to keep an eye on. I don't know what pressure the bags are good for, um, but obviously a Discovery 2 lifts three and a half ton and sets level. So. We'll have to look a bit more into it, but that's not too bad. Um, yeah, it's all right. So it's time to get this back in so we can start work on it next week. And the plug inside the boot seems to do the job. But the car don't roll. Ooh. Ah, that'd be the chock I put the other side. Take two. We're loaded, ready for tomorrow. I'm quite happy with that reversing, look. That bit of gap there. And that bit of gap there. I think I've done all right getting that in there. Um, right, so we're loaded up, ready to go. Ready for the morning. Um, the second alternator has just stopped charging. <sighs> so, fix one thing, something else comes along. We haven't had another, I was about to say, I don't think we've had another oil leak, but I don't know if that's old or new. Uh, keep an eye on that. Um, but a couple of the sump bolts were loose. So I've tightened them back up, so we'll keep an eye on that. Um, right, so now I'm gonna just quickly take the dash panel off and just check the the light on that, um, the battery light on that charging circuit. 
because that stopped coming on as well, which makes me wonder whether the bulb's blown. Right, so I've got another side light and I've put that in instead of that bulb. Still no light. I have just checked the connections. I'm getting 12 volt to it from the auxiliary battery. Um, and I've just earthed the other pin and the light works. I can't do it with one hand, but the light works, which tells me it's the alternator. Or the, well, I've even put a wire from the alternator straight to the back of the bulb as well. And no joy. So that kind of tells me it's the alternator, but that's brand new. So looks like we'll have to sort another alternator out. There we go. I've just earthed the body of the alternator. It's obviously not getting a very good earth through the powder coated um, bracket. So we need to put an alternator bracket, uh, alternator earth on. That's fine. We have returned from the MOT. It didn't even go in the MOT. Got there, got it off the trailer, no brakes. It's popped a front flexi hose, which are braided Goodridge ones. I think as opposed to popping it, I think where it's aired out, it's got caught and crushed it and split it. <sighs> so it's a good job I didn't drive it. Hmm. So what I need to do is now get it off the trailer, inspect it. Um, I did see they were getting close, but I thought every time you were, I've checked a couple of times, every time they went down, they all went out the way. But obviously there is some instances where they don't. So I've got to reevaluate the brake lines and then order some accordingly. So, right, let's get it off the trailer. Uh, you can see it. It's all leaked all over the trailer on the way home. Um, but obviously that's now on the bump stop, so it can't get any lower. So I'm not quite sure where it's getting caught. Let's have a look at the other side. I'm undecided. Unless it's getting trapped when it turns on lower suspension but I always raise it up before I move it you can see where it's pinched it's got pinched somewhere I wonder whether it has when you turn it on lock with no suspension whether that's getting caught right well let's get it off just gone into my stores and found a selection of different braided brake pipes so at least we haven't got to order any so I'm gonna pull it in, jack it up, and see if we can get this changed and work out if we can secure it from going anywhere near it somehow. Yeah, so when it's on full lock, when it's aired out, it catches. So we need to do something about that. We may have found another cause. It's caught behind that brake pipe that when you air up, so it's getting caught behind there. So yes, a bit of a design flaw. So I need to rectify that. But first, let's, uh, well, I don't know that what first really. Don't know, I'll have to have a little think. Right then. So now they're changed. I have done both sides. I've changed one pipe as well. The one where the pipe blew, you can see there, it's all a bit frayed. This had obviously got caught as part of it because it was squashed. So that would have been no good. So I changed that. I checked the other side. The other side was all right, but I have rerouted both of the new brake pipes. I pulled them close to the caliper and underneath and back as opposed to above and back. Um, so now I'm just going through the suspension cycles and just making sure them new hoses don't catch anywhere. And if they do, I need to um, secure them somehow. Also, I've moved the number plate because he told me today when I bring it back, that has to be um, unobscured and not cable tied. They're not allowed to be cable tied on anymore. I had it cable tied on the grill. He said it was obscured by the uh, A bar. So that's been brought forward ready for the, I won't say retest, but the second attempt at a test. So I'm just gonna go through this suspension cycling just to see, make sure we've got no catch and then we'll bleed the brakes up. I have obviously haven't bullet led them yet in case I need to undo it and move them. Right, so the other side, I can see exactly what happened as well as it getting pulled. On full lock, the caliper 
was touching here. The cable got in between, the brake pipe got in between and got squashed. So I'm gonna adjust my lock stops. You just undo the lock nut and wind the other one out and it hits the axle to wherever you want it to stop turning. So I'm gonna adjust that so there's a gap between the caliper and the axle, both sides. So in the event the cable does fall in there, it's not gonna get squidged. Morning, it's Saturday morning. Um, we managed to get the Defender MOT'd last night. It's now taxed, so today, or this morning, we're gonna go for a little test drive. So, I haven't got any way of mounting the camera in here yet, so I can't really show you much, but I'll let you know how I get on. Well, I made it to McDonald's, just. As I was airing up to leave, the um, right rear has no reading on the gauge. And I can hear air behind the dashboard. So I think it's popped off one of the controls. So we're gonna to have to run back to the workshop um, on the bump stop on one side and then take the panel off and see what's popped off. That's why we're just running around local because we're gonna have loads of these teething problems until we sort them out. So not bothered, let's go and see what it is. And there is our cause, a, uh, a broken, oh, <laughs> a broken connector, I've lost it now. Um, God knows where that went. But anyway, yes, so that had popped out. So while I was in there, I took the time to just move the wires, change some connectors over, just to make it run a bit smoother, because it was quite tight when you pushed it in. So I think a lot of them were up, were a bit, were, you know, were quite stressed. So I've just put some right angle ones on them to so the cables come in and forward as opposed to having to curve. So hopefully that might help the situation. So we're both, we're all up, we're all holding pressure. So let's go for another test drive. Right, we've got the uh, Solace connected up so we can keep an eye on the coolant temperature just to make sure our gauge is working. Um, so we'll just go for another little drive. And there we go, it was all worth it. It fits in my garage, aired out with the cage and even the lights on the top. I think that's a win and that's where I'm going to leave this video. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and share and I'll see you next week.